encyclical letter a supremi on the restoration of all things in christ october fourth nineteen three by pope st pius x this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by larry wilson encyclical letter of our holy father pius x by divine providence pope to the patriarchs archbishops bishops and other ordinaries in peace and communion with the apostolic see pius x pope venerable brethren health and apostolic benediction in addressing you for the first time from the chair of the supreme apostolate to which we have by the inscrutable disposition of god been elevated it is not necessary to remind you with what tears and earnest prayers we exerted ourselves to evade this formidable burden of the pontificate unequal in merit though we be with saint anselm it seems to us that we may with truth make our own words in which he lamented when he was constrained against his will and in spite of his struggles to receive the honour of the episcopate for to show with what disposition of mind and will we subjected ourselves to the most serious charge of feeding the flock of christ we can well adduce those same proofs of grief which he invokes in his own behalf my tears are witnesses he wrote quote, and the sounds and moanings issuing from the anguish of my heart such as i never remember before to have come from me for any sorrow before that day on which there seemed to fall upon me that great misfortune of the archbishopric of canterbury and those who fixed their gaze on my face that day could not fail to see it i in colour more like a dead than a living man was pale for amazement and alarm hitherto i have resisted as far as i could speaking the truth my election or rather the violence done me but now i am constrained to confess whether i will or no that the judgments of god oppose greater and greater resistance to my efforts so that i see no way of escaping them wherefore vanquished as i am by the violence not so much of men as of god against which there is no providing i realize that nothing is left for me after having prayed as much as i could and striven that this chalice should if possible pass from me without my drinking it but to set aside my feeling and my will and resign myself entirely to the design and will of god Unquote. in truth reasons both numerous and most weighty were not lacking to justify this resistance of ours for beside the fact that we deemed ourselves altogether unworthy through our insignificance of seeing himself designated to succeed him who ruling the church the honour of the pontificate who should not have been disturbed at the supreme wisdom for nearly twenty-six years showed himself adorned with such sublimity of mind such lustre of every virtue as to attract to himself the admiration even of adversaries and to leave his memory consecrated by glorious achievements then again to omit other motives we were terrified beyond all else by the disastrous state of human society to-day for who can fail to see that society is at the present time more than in any past age suffering from a terrible and deep-rooted malady which developing every day and eating into its inmost being is dragging it to destruction you understand venerable brethren what this disease is apostasy from god than which in truth nothing is more allied to ruin according to the word of the prophet for behold they that go far from thee shall perish psalm seventy two seventeen we saw therefore that in virtue of the ministry of the pontificate which was to be entrusted to us we must hasten to find a remedy for this great evil considering as addressed to us the divine command lo I have set thee this day over the nations and over kingdoms, to root up and to pull down, and to waste and to destroy, and to build and to plant. Jeremiah 1.10 But cognizant of our weakness, we recoiled in terror from a task as urgent as it is arduous. The Pope's Program Since, however, it has been pleasing to the divine will to raise our lowliness to such sublimity of power, 
we take courage in him who strengthens us and setting ourselves to work relying on the power of god we proclaim we have no other program in the supreme pontificate but that of restoring all things in christ ephesians one ten so that christ may be all and in all colossians three two some will certainly be found who measuring divine things by human standards will seek to discover secret aims of ours distorting them to an earthly purpose and to political designs to eliminate all vain delusions of such we say to them with emphasis that we do not wish to be and with the divine assistance never shall be aught before human society but the minister of god of whose authority we are the depository the interests of god shall be our interests and for these we are resolved to spend all our strength and our very life hence should any one ask us for a symbol as the expression of our will we will give this and no other to renew all things in christ in undertaking this glorious task we are greatly quickened by the certainty that we shall have all of you venerable brethren as generous cooperators did we doubt it we should have to regard you unjustly as either unconscious or heedless of that sacrilegious war which is now almost everywhere stirred up and fomented against god for in truth the nations have raged and the people imagined vain things psalm two one against their creator so frequent is the cry of the enemies of god depart from us job twenty one fourteen and as might be expected we find extinguished among the majority of men all respect for the eternal god and no regard paid in the manifestation of public and private life to the supreme will nay every effort and every artifice is used to destroy utterly the memory and the knowledge of god when all this is considered there is good reason to fear lest this great perversity may be as it were a foretaste and perhaps the beginning of those evils which are reserved for the last days and that there may be already in the world the son of perdition of whom the apostle speaks second thessalonians two four such in truth is the audacity and the wrath employed everywhere in persecuting religion in combating the dogmas of the faith in resolute effort to uproot and destroy all relations between man and the divinity while on the other hand and this according to the same apostle is the distinguishing mark of antichrist man has with infinite temerity put himself in the place of god raising himself above all that is called god in such wise that although he cannot utterly extinguish in himself all knowledge of god he has contemned god's majesty and as it were made of the universe a temple wherein he himself is to be adored he sitteth in the temple of god showing himself as if he were god second thessalonians two two verily no one of sound mind can doubt the issue of this contest between man and the most high man abusing his liberty can violate the right and the majesty of the creator of the universe but the victory will ever be with god nay defeat is at hand at the moment when man under the delusion of his triumph rises up with most audacity of this we are assured in the holy books by god himself unmindful as it were of his strength and greatness he overlooks the sins of men wisdom eleven twenty four but swiftly after these apparent retreats awakened like a mighty man that hath been surfeited with wine psalm seventy seven sixty five he shall break the heads of his enemies psalm sixty seven twenty two that all may know that god is the king of all the earth psalm sixty six eight that the gentiles may know themselves to be men psalm nine twenty peace to the nations all this venerable brethren we believe and expect with unshakable faith but this does not prevent us also according to the measure given to each from exerting ourselves to hasten the work of god and not merely by praying assiduously arise o lord let not man be strengthened psalm nine nineteen but more important still by affirming both by word and deed and in the light of day god's supreme dominion over man and all things 
so that his right to command and his authority may be fully realized and respected. This is imposed upon us not only as a natural duty, but by our common interest. For, venerable brethren, who can avoid being appalled and afflicted when he beholds in the midst of a progress in civilization which is justly extolled the greater part of mankind fighting among themselves so savagely as to make it seem as though strife were universal the desire for peace is certainly harbored in every breast and there is no one who does not ardently invoke it but to want peace without god is an absurdity seeing that where god is absent thence too justice flies and when justice is taken away it is vain to cherish the hope of peace and the work of justice shall be peace isaiah thirty two seventeen there are many we are well aware who in yearning for peace that is to say the tranquillity of order brand themselves into societies and parties which they style parties of order hope and labor lost for there is but one party of order capable of restoring peace in the midst of all this turmoil, and that is the party of God. It is this party, therefore, that we must advance, and to it attract as many as possible, if we are really urged by the love of peace. Through Christ alone. But, venerable brethren, we shall never, however much we exert ourselves, succeed in calling men back to the majesty and empire of god except by means of jesus christ no one the apostle admonishes us can lay other foundation than that which has been laid which is christ jesus first corinthians three eleven it is christ alone whom the father sanctified and sent into this world isaiah ten thirty six the splendor of the father and the image of his substance hebrews one three true god and true man without whom nobody can know god with the knowledge for salvation neither doth any one know the father but the son and he to whom it shall please the son to reveal him matthew eleven twenty seven hence it follows that to restore all things in christ and to lead men back to submission to god is one and the same aim to this then it behooves us to devote our care to lead back mankind under the dominion of christ this done we shall have brought it back to god when we say to god we do not mean to that inert being heedless of all things human which the dream of materialist has imagined but to the true and living god one in nature triple in person creator of the world most wise ordainer of all things lawgiver most just who punishes the wicked and has reward in store for the virtuous by the church now the way to reach christ is not hard to find it is the church rightly does chrysostom inculcate quote, the church is thy hope the church is thy salvation the church is thy refuge unquote. homily de capoto utropio number six it was for this that christ founded it gaining it at the price of his blood and made it the depository of his doctrine and his laws bestowing upon it at the same time an inexhaustible treasury of graces for the sanctification and salvation of men you see then venerable brethren the duty that has been imposed alike upon us and upon you of bringing back to the discipline of the church human society now is strange from the wisdom of christ the church will then subject it to christ and christ to god if we through the goodness of god himself bring this task to a happy issue we shall be rejoiced to see evil giving place to good and hear for our gladness a loud voice from heaven saying now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ apocalypse twelve ten but if our desire to obtain this is to be fulfilled we must use every means and exert all our energy to bring about the utter disappearance of that enormous and detestable wickedness so characteristic of our time the substitution of man for god this done it remains to restore to their ancient place of honor the most holy laws and counsels of the gospel to proclaim aloud the truths taught by the church as her teachings on the sanctity of marriage on the education and discipline of youth on the possession and use of property 
and the duties that men owe to those who rule the state and lastly to restore equilibrium between the different classes of society according to christian precept and custom this is what we in submitting ourselves to the manifestations of the divine will purpose to aim at during our pontificate and we will use all our industry to attain it it is for you venerable brethren to second our efforts by your holiness knowledge and experience and above all by your zeal for the glory of god with no other aim than that christ may be formed in all formation of the priesthood as to the means to be employed in attaining this great end it seems superfluous to name them for they are obvious of themselves let your first care to be formed christ in those who are destined from the duty of their vocation to form him in others we speak of the priest venerable brethren for all you who hear the seal of the priesthood must know that they have the same mission to the people in the midst of whom they live as that which paul in these tender words proclaimed that he received my little children of whom i am in labor again until christ be formed in you galatians four nineteen but how will they be able to perform this duty if they be not first clothed with christ themselves and so clothed with christ as to be able to say with the apostle i live yet not i but christ lives in me galatians two twenty for me to live is christ philippians one twenty one hence although all are included in the exhortation to advance towards the perfect man in the measure of the age of the fullness of christ ephesians four three it is addressed before all others to him who exercises the sacerdotal ministry who is therefore called another christ not merely by the communication of power but by reason of the imitation of his works and he should therefore bear stamped upon himself the image of christ this being so venerable brethren of what nature and magnitude is the care that must be taken by you in forming the clergy to holiness all other tasks must yield to this one wherefore the chief part of your diligence will be directed to governing and ordering your seminaries aright so that they may flourish equally in the soundness of their teaching and in the spotlessness of their morals regard your seminary as the delight of your hearts and neglect on its behalf none of those provisions which the council of trent has with admirable forethought prescribed and when the time comes for promoting the youthful candidates to holy orders ah do not forget what paul wrote to timothy impose not hands lightly upon any man first timothy five twenty two bearing carefully in mind that as a general rule the faithful would be much as are those whom you call to the priesthood do not then pay heed to private interests of any kind but have at heart only god and the church and the eternal welfare of souls so that as the apostle admonishes you may not be partakers in the sins of others first timothy five twenty two then again be not lacking in solicitude for young priests who have just left the seminary from the bottom of our heart we urge you to bring them often close to your breast which should burn with celestial fire kindle them inflame them so that they may aspire solely after god and the salvation of souls rest assured venerable brethren that we on our side will use the greatest diligence to prevent the members of the clergy from being drawn to the snares of a certain new and fallacious science which savoreth not of christ but with masked and cunning arguments strives to open the door to the errors of rationalism and semi-rationalism against which the apostle warned timothy to be on his guard when he wrote keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding the profane novelties of words and oppositions of knowledge falsely so called which some promising have erred concerning the faith first timothy six twenty this does not prevent us from esteeming worthy of praise those young priests who dedicate themselves to useful studies in every branch of learning the better to prepare themselves to defend the truth and to refute the calumnies of the enemies of the faith yet we cannot conceal nay we proclaim in the most open manner possible that our preference is and ever will be for those who while cultivating ecclesiastical and literary erudition dedicate themselves more closely to the welfare of souls 
through the exercise of those ministries proper to a priest zealous of the divine glory it is a great grief and a continual sorrow to our heart romans nine two to find jeremiah's lamentation applicable to our times the little ones asked for bread and there was none to break it to them lamentations four four for there are not lacking among the clergy those who adapt themselves according to their bent to works of more apparent than real solidity but not so numerous perhaps are those who after the example of christ take to themselves the words of the prophet the spirit of the lord hath anointed me hath sent me to evangelize the poor to heal the contrite of heart to announce freedom to the captive and sight to the blind luke four eighteen nineteen religious instruction yet who can fail to see venerable brethren that while men are led by reason and liberty the principal way to restore the empire of god in their souls is religious instruction how many there are who hate christ and abhor the church and the gospel more through ignorance than through badness of mind of whom it may well be said they blaspheme whatever things they know not jude two ten this is found to be the case not only among the people at large and among the lowest classes who are thus easily led astray but even among the more cultivated and those enriched in other respects with great erudition the result is for a great many the loss of the faith for it is not true that the progress of knowledge extinguishes the faith rather is it ignorance and the more ignorance prevails the greater is the havoc wrought by incredulity and this is why christ commanded the apostles going forth teach all nations matthew twenty eight nineteen but in order that the desired fruit may be derived from this apostolate and this zeal for teaching and that christ may be formed in all be it remembered venerable brethren that no means is more efficacious than charity for the lord is not in the earthquake third kings nineteen two it is in vain to hope to attract souls to god by a bitter zeal on the contrary harm is done more often than good by taunting men harshly with their truths and reproving their vices with asperity true the apostle exhorted timothy accuse beseech rebuke but he took care to add with all patience second timothy four two jesus has certainly left us examples of this come to me we will find him saying come to me all ye that labor and are burthened and i will refresh you matthew eleven twenty eight and by those that labor and are burthened he meant only those who are slaves of sin and error what gentleness was that shown by the divine master what tenderness what compassion towards all kinds of misery isaiah has marvelously described his heart in the words i will set my spirit upon him he shall not contend nor cry out the bruised reed he will not break he will not extinguish the smoking flax isaiah forty two one this charity patient and kind first corinthians thirteen four will extend itself also to those who are hostile to us and persecute us we are reviled thus did st paul protest and we blessed we are persecuted and we suffer it we are blasphemed and we entreat first corinthians four twelve they perhaps seem to be worse than they really are their associations with others prejudice the counsel advice and example of others and finally an ill-advised shame have dragged them to the side of the impious but their wills are not so depraved as they themselves would seek to make people believe who will prevent us from hoping that the flame of christian charity may dispel the darkness from their minds and bring to them light and the peace of god it may be that the fruits of our labors may be slow in coming but charity wearies not with waiting knowing that god prepares his rewards not for the results of toil but for the good will shown in it work for the laity it is true venerable brethren that in this arduous task of the restoration of the human race in christ neither you nor your clergy should exclude all assistance we know that god recommended every one to have a care for his neighbor ecclesiastes seventeen twelve 
for it is not priests alone but all the faithful without exception who must concern themselves with the interests of god and souls not of course according to their own views but always under the direction and orders of the bishops for to no one in the church except you is it given to preside over to teach to rule the church of god wherein the holy ghost has placed you bishops acts twenty twenty eight our predecessors have long since approved and blessed those catholics who have banded together in societies of various kinds but always religious in their aim we too have no hesitation in awarding our praise to this great idea and we earnestly desire to see it propagated and flourish in town and country but we wish that all such associations aim first and chiefly at the constant maintenance of christian life among those who belong to them for truly it is of little avail to discuss questions with nice subtlety or to discourse eloquently on rights and duties when all this is unconnected with practice the times we live in demand action but action which consists entirely in observing with fidelity and zeal the divine laws and the precepts of the church in the frank and open profession of religion in the exercise of every kind of charitable works without regard to self-interest or worldly advantage such luminous examples given by the great army of soldiers of christ will be of much greater avail in moving and drawing men than words and sublime dissertations and it will easily come about that when human respect has been driven out and prejudices and doubting laid aside large numbers will be won to christ becoming in their turn promoters of his knowledge and love which are the road to true solid happiness oh when in every city and village the law of the lord is faithfully observed when respect is shown for sacred things when the sacraments are frequented and the ordinances of christian life fulfilled there certainly will be no more need for us to labor further to see all things restored in christ nor is it for the attainment of eternal welfare alone that this will be of service it will also contribute largely to temporal welfare and the advantage of human society for when these conditions have been secured the upper and wealthy classes will learn to be just and charitable to the lowly and these will be able to bear with tranquillity and patience the trials of a very hard lot the citizens will obey not lust but law reverence and love will be deemed a duty toward those that govern whose power comes only from god romans thirteen one and then then at last it will be clear to all that the church such as it was instituted by christ must enjoy full and entire liberty and independence from all external dominion and we in demanding that same liberty are defending not only the sacred rights of religion but are also consulting the common weal and the safety of nations for it continues to be true that piety is useful for all things first timothy four eight when this is strong and flourishing the people will truly sit in the fullness of peace isaiah thirty two eighteen may god who is rich in mercy ephesians two four benignly speed this restoration of the human race in jesus christ for it is not him that willeth or of him that runneth but of god that showeth mercy romans nine sixteen and let us venerable brethren in the spirit of humility daniel three thirty nine with continuous and urgent prayer ask this of him through the merits of jesus christ let us turn too to the most powerful intercession of the divine mother to obtain which we addressing to you this letter of ours on the day appointed especially for commemorating the holy rosary ordain and confirm all our predecessors prescriptions with regard to the dedication of the present month to the august virgin by the public recitation of the rosary in all churches with the further exhortation that as intercessors with god appeal be also made to the most pure spouse of mary the patron of the catholic church and the holy princes of the apostles peter and paul and that all this may be realized in fulfillment of our ardent desire and that everything may be prosperous with you we invoke upon you the most beautiful gifts of divine grace and now in testimony of that most tender charity wherewith we embrace you and all the faithful whom divine providence has entrusted us we impart with all affection in the lord 
the apostolic blessings to you venerable brethren to the clergy and to your people given at rome at st peter's on the fourth day of october nineteen three in the first year of our pontificate pius the tenth end of encyclical letter a supremi on the restoration of all things in christ october fourth nineteen three